What's going on? This is Eric with Olympic Health Physics, and today we're talking about nuclear medicine record retention. Okay, so I know you're really excited about this one. It's records and talking about how long we need to keep them, but it's not going to be that bad. We're going to go through all the records that you need to keep in nuclear medicine to satisfy the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, okay? So having said that, if you're in an agreement state, make sure that this matches up with, with the rules that you have in an agreement state. They generally align, but there can be some differences. So we're going to be talking through uh, the, what the NRC requires, and then you can extrapolate that to your particular state. Okay, so this is a question that we get a lot, which is, Whenever we come in to do a health physics audit or a nuclear medicine uh, audit, we're oftentimes asked, how long do I need to keep records? I have records that go way long time ago before I was uh, working here. Do I need to actually keep those? So this video is going to be walking through exactly what you need to keep and how long you need to keep it for. In general, records are divided into one of three different categories, a three-year retention period, a five-year retention period, or a lifetime, or a lifetime of the license retention period. So let's start with the three-year retention period. This is where uh, most of our records in nuclear medicine, our regulatory records, are gonna fall within the three-year period. So the records that are required for three years, sealed source inventory, sealed source leak testing, area surveys, your disposal records for your radioactive waste, so anything that you are uh, decay in storage, you need to keep those records for a period of three years. Molly 99 breakthrough test, you need to keep the results of those if you're still using generators. Any dose calibrator test, so that's gonna be your uh, daily constancy, quarterly linearity, your uh, geometry test, and your accuracy test. Those, any tests that pertain to the dose calibrator, you need to keep those for a period of three years. Your radiation safety training records, written directives, any written directives, I-131 or otherwise, all the written directives need to be kept for three years. In conjunction with the written directives, you also need any kind of patient release uh, data or criteria or calculations. You'll need to keep that records of patient dose administrations and instrument calibration certificates. So if you have Geiger counters or ion chambers, you need the instrument calibration certificates and those are also going to be retained for a period of three years. So if it's over three years for any of those items, you can get rid of it. Um, if it's within three years, you need to keep it. All right, next up is the five year retention period. So these are the records that you're going to need to keep for a period of five years. The Radiation Safety Committee meeting minutes. So if you have a Radiation Safety Committee, you need to keep minutes and you need to keep those uh, minutes for a period of five years. And then you also need to keep any documentation that has to deal with the Radiation Protection Program. So this is going to be the authority, responsibility, changes, scope, anything that deals with that, you need to keep those records for five years also. So uh, for example, who is the radiation safety officer? Who's the associate radiation safety officer? If you have one, um, are there any changes to the program? What is the uh, duties and responsibilities of the RSO? All of that documentation needs to be kept for five years. And last, these are the records that you need to keep for the duration of the license. So as long as you have a radioactive materials license, you have to keep these records. The first one is, is dosimetry. So any occupational dosimetry reports, you need to keep those for the entirety of the license. We can't get rid of those uh, basically ever. Always keep those. And secondly, you need to keep the procedures for administrations that require a written directive. So any uh, written directive uh, procedures that you're doing, there will be a written procedure that you're gonna need to submit to the NRC or to an agreement state whenever you're doing your license application. Those procedures, those need to be kept for the duration of the license as well. And that's it. Those are all the records that you need to keep, three years, five years, forever. And again, make sure that you're double checking this information if you're in agreement state to make sure that it does align with what the NRC requires. Your state may require additional 
um, documentation or additional records and uh, have a maybe a longer retention period. So always double check those things to make sure that you're in check with those. But this is what the NRC requires. So you can um, go and look at, you can look these up. They're in 10 CFR part 35. Uh, some of the stuff is also in part 20. So you can look there as well. And one last note on uh, records. We wanna try to keep really good, clean records. We don't want our records all over the place. We wanna kinda of keep them centralized so that whenever the inspectors come in and they want to review your records, it makes their job a lot easier. And if their job is a lot easier, it makes your inspection go a little bit smoother. So that's record retention. If you have any questions about records or how to keep really good records or whether or not you can get rid of certain pieces of documentation, feel free to shoot us a note. We'll be happy to, to help you out with that and uh, be able to answer any questions that you have.